Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for less hot Canadians next time you play. Maybe. Today we're making Scott Summers, the leader of the X-Men, at least in the field, even though Professor X can project his consciousness and see everything that's happening. Honestly, he probably just trusts you and wants to do other psychic guy stuff. If you could read everyone's mind everywhere in the world, would you want to fight people? No, you'd want to learn everyone's crushes. Hello, ladies. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need optic concussive blasts. That means pushing and hitting, not lasers. But we'll also get some lasers for people who aren't as specific about things that come out of Scott's face. Next, we need to lead the team with ways to inspire everyone to do their best. Finally, we'll make sure that we're pretty good at fighting things hand to hand. Not like great, but pretty good. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch those multi-classing minimums. Charisma will be number one. You've got big jock energy, as in you peaked in high school and then got a job at the school to keep reliving your glory days. Strength next, your jock energy also extends to your fitness, helping you fill out the yellow and blue spandex rather well. Dexterity after that, as I just mentioned, your outfit choice is skin-tight spandex, so you'll need decent dexterity if you don't want to get pummeled all the time. Follow that up with wisdom, your whole superpower is eye stuff, so the perception should be pretty good even if you're always wearing red sunglasses. Constitution is a bit low. You're a fairly tough guy, but you don't have a healing factor like your romantic rival and will dump intelligence. We just don't really need it for anything. I make a lot of mutants half elves and today it's really important because I want all the half elf stuff. Plus two charisma will help our blasts. Plus one dexterity and constitution will help us balance out some other stuff later. Dark vision will let you see in the dark. Cyclops lives in a cave when Odysseus finds him and fights. Oh, that's the wrong Cyclops. You'll get a little mental fortitude from your fey ancestry, giving you advantage on saves against being charmed, and you can't be put to sleep with magic, but we're really here for skill versatility, which is a fancy way of saying, hey buddy, go grab a couple skills. You deserve it. Persuasion and acrobatics will help you lead the team and do sweet backflips. Everyone knows you can't be a good leader without doing a backflip. For your background, there isn't a pilot background, but sailor is kind of like that. You get athletics and perception skills, as well as water vehicle proficiency. If your DM has air vehicles in their setting, just ask if you can swap up. Also, DMs, did you make a big homebrew world your players want to explore? Uh, put some airships in the game. Everybody likes airships. We'll kick things off as a warlock. Sure, you have some powers, but those powers really come together when you get an eccentric benefactor to help you channel them. That's a warlock. You run some errands for the professor and he'll give you some sunglasses to stop you from murdering everyone you love when you look at them. It really is a good trade. You get two skills from the warlock list. Deception will help you cheat on your wife and history will help you hold down a teaching job. I think Professor X has some benevolent intentions, so we'll call that a celestial warlock, giving you healing light, which are a number of d6s equal to one plus your warlock level that you can give to your allies as a bonus action, spending an amount equal to your charisma modifier. Obviously, you don't shoot your lasers at the party. Hit points aren't meat points though. This is just some reflavored encouragement. We're really signing up for Warlock because this is the Eldritch Blast build. Remember, Scott's shots are concussive, not lasers. That means force damage. And since Cyclops just shoots beams out of his face, occasionally punches people, and encourages his team, we're going to do everything we can to get the most out of one cantrip. It starts off dealing 1d10 force damage with a ranged spell attack. We're going to get it to crazy levels later. You're an omega level mutant with directional beams. They have to be good. For your other cantrips, you get light from being a celestial warlock if you want to light the path for the less visual X-Men. And Sacred Flame forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing 1d8 radiant damage if they fail. I know I just said they're not lasers, but some people like to think that they're lasers. And you know what? We can grab it. So there you go. Use this if you want. Otherwise, there's nothing wrong with just spamming Eldritch Blast. Unless you want to use Guiding Bolt, then you can deal 4d6 radiant damage with a ranged spell attack and give the next person attacking that target advantage to hit them. Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, almost like Step of the Wind from Monk. I could have made Scott a Sun Soul Monk, but again, Focusing on force damage is stronger and more accurate. Second level warlocks get invocations or special training from your mentor that will make you better with your mutant powers. Agonizing Blast lets you add your charisma modifier to the damage of your Eldritch Blast attacks. Repelling Blast lets you push people 10 feet back when you blast them, which works out pretty well. If you've got a weakness, say you're kind of a squishy dude. Keep the baddies on the other side of the stage, please. 
Third level warlocks can choose a gift from their patron, call an X patch, a talisman, boom, you got a pact of the talisman. Now let's add a D4 to skill checks you failed and amount of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus. You also learn second level spells. Shatter forces a constitution saving throw on a 10 foot radius sphere, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to creatures that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It also damages structures and objects if you want to use your eyes to blast a hole in the wall. Four level warlocks get an ability score improvement, bump your charisma and constitution for better beams and less dying. Scott doesn't die, his romantic partners do. Fifth level warlocks get another invocation. Eldritch Spear increases the range of your Eldritch Blast to 300 feet because even though we just invested in more HP, you're still not the bulkiest of boys. You can also learn third level spells like Daylight to create a big bright light and even to spell magical darkness of second level or lower, even if most of the X-Men end up having dark vision. I like making them half elves, what do you want? More varying humans? You're also shooting two Eldritch Blast beams at this point, and unlike Grasp of Hadar, Repelling Blast works with every single beam, so you can push people every time you use it. It's pretty great. Sixth level Celestial Warlocks get Radiant Soul, giving you resistance to radiant damage and letting you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of one radiant or fire damaging spell. I'm mostly grabbing this for the resistances. You can ignore the blast your brother sends out at you, and there really isn't a way to get resistance to force damage outside of Artificer, so this is what we're getting. I know it's inconsistent consistent but again remember this is the eldritch blast build so for more eldritch blasting let's jump over to fighter i guess first level fighters get a fighting style unarmed fighting will let you punch people dealing 1d6 damage with one hand 1d8 with two hands and 1d4 damage once per round to a creature you've got grappled though i wouldn't hold anyone all that close to you if you have a 300 foot range you also get second wind letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest but that's not what we're actually here for what we're here for is second level of fighter for action surge letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest for four beams per round at this point and eight beams by the end of the build cantrips scale better than first level spells and eldritch blast is the poppermost of the toppermost of the cantrips third level fighters can choose a martial archetype battle masters get something stronger than eight eldritch blast beams per round student of war lets you pick a set of artisans tools to be proficient with like calligrapher supplies to take yourself to omega level instantly you also get four superiority die you can use for three maneuvers to let your team be a little bit better commander strike lets you use your bonus action to let an ally make an opportunity attack with their reaction and add a d8 to that damage Colossus probably punches harder than you do. Rally lets you give an ally temporary HP equal to your superiority die plus your charisma modifier. You're in charge of making sure the kids get back to school, so don't let them die. Ambush lets you add your superiority die to an initiative roll. If you go first, you can fire your blasts first, and you're going to be fighting a much weaker brotherhood after you spam everyone with Eldritch Blast. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Let's cap off your charisma modifier to deal the most possible damage with your agonizing blasts. I really don't care about you being a fighter. I just wanted action surge and calligraphy. Okay, let's go back to casting classes to get better with our beams by going to sorcerer. I guess we need to pick a sorcerer's origin. We'll go for divine soul because I don't know how to do anything else. I just want cleric spells without making a cleric. Don't judge me. You get to be favored by the gods, letting you add 2d4 to a failed saving throw or attack roll. Once per short rest to make sure that you don't miss or to make sure that your enemies do miss. For your cantrips, guidance and resistance, give a creature a d4 for ability checks or saving throws respectively for a little bit more team building. Message lets you whisper something to a creature within 120 feet of you for a little radio communication and firebolt is a range spell attack that deals 2d10 fire damage i'm not saying that your beam is fire now but i guess i'm saying your beam is fire now there's no reason to use this instead of eldritch blast almost nothing resists force damage speaking of for first level spells magic missile lets you land very consistent shots firing three beams that deal 1d4 plus one force damage each and automatically hit yeah don't miss unless you want to i don't really know what that means if you're trying to miss then i guess you didn't miss right let's gives up to three creatures a d4 they can add to attack rolls and saving throws for up to a minute depending on your concentration though it's worth noting you can give it to one more creature for each level of spell you add and honestly this is probably the most in character spell for you to use your concentration on since we're multi-class and spell casters with warlocks know that you can cast sorcerer spells with warlock slots and vice versa but you don't scale up in multi-claster levels like you would if you were mixing other casters second level sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points you can use to recover spell slots but you can also turn spell slots into sorcery points which is going to be my recommendation for just about all of yours more on that next level for this level spell thunder wave is a big aoe of pushing forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you dealing 2 to 8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet half as much to those that succeed but actually your eldritch blast 
might be better at pushing people than this, especially next level. Because at the third level of Sorcerer, you get Meta Magic, letting you augment your spells with sorcery points. Quick and Spell lets you cast spells with a bonus action that normally take an action to cast. Eldritch Blast takes an action to cast, and since you're at total level 11, each casting of Eldritch Blast shoots three beams, meaning nine total now after an action surge for 9d10 plus 45 force damage and possibly 90 feet of pushing from Repelling Blast. That's a lot of pushing. For your other meta magic option, I don't know, Distance Spell would give you a 600 foot range on your Eldritch Blast beams. I don't think they make maps much larger than that, but maybe if someone wants to try to use a Dimension Door to get away from you, you can still blast them. Should I even talk about your spell slot spells? You could use those spell slots for more sorcery points for quick and spell. That's all you ever need to do. But I guess you could grab Enhanced Ability to further encourage your team, giving them advantage on a type of ability checks. If you choose Strength, they also double their carrying capacity. If you choose Dexterity, they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less. And if you choose Constitution, they get 2d6 temporary HP. No matter how you want to play the quarterback, your leadership lasts for one hour, depending on your concentration. Fourth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement or a feat. The Inspiring Leader feat lets you give a rousing 10 minute speech to give up to six allies temporary HP, equal to your Charisma modifier plus your total level, making Wolverine even more bulky, even if sometimes you kind of wish he died. You also learn another spell like lock to break a lock off its hinges. It's super loud, but it's not like you're picking a lock. You're pretty much just making it explode with your eyes. Fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells, I guess. Protection from energy lets a creature resist acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage for an hour, depending on your concentration. Or you could boil it down for five sorcery points, which is five rounds of doubled Eldritch Blast. That's what I would do. Sixth level divine soul sorcerers get two things we can ignore, like empowered healing, which lets you spend sorcery points to help allies recover cover, but you don't like the regenerator on your team, so who cares? You could also grab another spell like sending to communicate with a creature somewhere on the same plane as you if you want to call them on a fantasy cell phone, or you could quicken Eldritch Blast. Seventh level sorcerers get a fourth level spell slot to melt into melty beams, or I guess you could use it on Death Ward to keep a creature at one HP when it should drop to zero. Just a little keep on keeping on. Or six quickened spells with four Eldritch Blast beams per round now. Probably what I would do. Eighth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. We'll grab the Meta Magic Adept feat for two more sorcery points that you can use for Meta Magic options, which means two more quickened spells per day. Also, you can learn two more Meta Magic options. Uh, Careful spell will let your allies get advantage on saving throws against spells you cast. A number of allies equal to your charisma modifier in case you're doing the big AoE blast thing and heightened spell will give one enemy disadvantage on that in case again you're doing the big aoe thing just quicken the spells quicken the spells quicken the spells i don't know how many times i could say it just quicken the eldritch blast that's what the sorcery points are for we'll round this off with two more levels of fighter for another ability score improvement but not at the fifth level fifth level fighters get an extra attack letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one but forget that because your punches aren't as good as your eldritch blast beams our capstone is the sixth level of fighter for another ability score improvement or a feat Let's just grab the tough feet for 40 HP, helping you not die and keep shooting your beams. Are those beams good? Well, now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are laser focused. And by that, I mean in a single round, you can deal 12 D10 plus 60 force damage, push a target 120 feet back and land those shots from up to 300 feet away. Even when you don't have action surge, you've still got a ton of rounds of 8 D10 plus 40 with quickened spell. So it's big damage, yes, but it's also consistent damage. You've also got a bunch of ways to help your party do better with support spells and inspiring leader to make everyone a little bit cooler. For weaknesses, your laser focus kind of means you only have one thing to do. So if you don't like casting Eldritch Blast, this isn't the build for you. You've also got kind of middling AC around 16 with medium armor, and that's assuming that you're gonna call Scott's armor medium armor. It's probably mage armor. Finally, dumping intelligence could be an issue if you plan to fight a psychic cult, but just as long as you're not doing the Hellfire Club arc, you should be fine. Shoot beams and lead teams. Just remember, if you don't change up the character every now and then, people might think you're kind of boring. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Iron Fist from Marvel, Captain Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean, Captain Falcon from Nintendo, or Sailor Venus from Sailor Moon. And sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.